Hi, I'm David Harry, and in this video, I'm going to be going through one particular great aspect of the HQX codec by Grass Valley. Okay, so the point of this video then is to run through one particular aspect of the HQX codec by Grass Valley. Now, if nobody knows what this is, what it is, it is a production broadcast codec, which is used with inside the EDIUS NLE software, and also other things that Grass Valley make as well, software-wise. And what it is, it's a fantastic codec. In my books, it is the best one for Rec. 709 at 8-bit and 10-bit, up to 4K. Now, what I'm gonna do here is show certain aspects Aspects about the codec which well I would call it a smart codec off the back of this I'm not entirely sure as to whether or not it is referred to as a smart codec by Grass Valley but in my books it definitely is or, or at the very least it's a very clever codec so anyway I'll get into this now and then I'll come back and do a little bit of a summary at the end what I've got here is a HQ project setup let me just go and have a quick look at the parameters for the project so it's 1080 25 8-bit all the rest of it now this would also work the same for hqx in 10-bit as well so every step that i do here is exactly reproducible with hqx it's effectively one of the same codec one version does 8-bit which is hq and the other does 10-bit which is hqx so i've got a piece of media in the timeline as we can see here so the first thing that i need to do is to prepare that as a hq file so what I'm going to do here is go print to file and then let me choose HQ. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to select online fine. And the reason for that is, is because I'm going to show the characteristics of the codec when I try to go above that setting on a re-export and below that setting on a re-export. So what I'll do, I'll just call this one HQ fine and I'll export that. Okay, that should take a few seconds to go out. The subsequent renders or exports from this point will be quicker because this is a 4K MP4 file inside, you know, a, a HD timeline being exported for the first time. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to bring that media to the timeline. And what I'll do here, I shall put some IO markers around it. So now what we're going to do is export that to the exact same standard or the exact same setting for the HQ parameters. So print a file once again, HQ there. So what I'm gonna call this is HQ fine to HW, no, HQ fine, okay. So now what we should see here after the export is that this will be exactly the same size. So here we go. So there's our two clips now in the bin, but what I'm gonna do is measure these from within Windows. So let me go to the folder here, and there's the HQ Find, which is our master as it were. So what I'm gonna do is have a look at properties on that, and then there's Find to Find. I'll have a look at properties on that. Okay, now as we can see here, both of them are identical down to the byte size. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to go back to this one, which is our HQ fine. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to replicate a very simple edit here. I mean, not, not on crazy because I don't really need to go mad here, I suppose. So what I'm going to do is just reshuffle these components about. And then obviously what I'm doing here, uh, you know, this is an edit. Um, whether it's a good edit, I don't know, <laughs> but it's, it's an edit nonetheless. So what I'm actually doing here is just to show that once we take any HQ media and it's been already like you know set at certain parameters, if we just do cuts only, which is exactly what I've done here, and then do an export, that it's not going to increase or decrease in file size when using the same parameters. So once again, print to file. Let's do HQ again. And then, I mean, we know where we're up to here. I'm just going to call this Fine Edit. Okay, so we'll export that out once again. See, we're using the exact same parameters for the output. Okay, so that'll go out. 
once again I'll just go back to Windows here so let me have a look at fine again so properties for the master there they are and then there's fine edit so we'll go to properties there and once again it is bit for bit the exact same size so again once again proving it's a very smart codec okay now what i'm going to do this now edited piece here i'm not even going to refer back to the master because we've now already kind of identified that it is identical so what i'm going to do here i'm going to increase the actual bit rate on the output now and let's watch what happens here because this is quite possibly the most interesting thing as far as i'm concerned so i'm going to go to custom and i'm going to absolutely max out the codec there so i'm just going to call it max once again we know what we're working with hq fine and such stuff as the original so max is now set for the output parameters and this is very interesting because what it does it does not increase the file size right let me show you so max so go to properties on max and then we'll go back to hq fine we'll have a look at that and as we should see here bit for bit exactly the same size now what's really interesting about that is this is say for instance if you've ingested or whether you've like transcoded any number of uh, say video files in the exact same frame rates and frame sizes and such at hqx and let's just say they were done in at various times for instance and all you've done is just lob them all together into an edit if you want to maintain the exact quality of what them original ingests or them transcodes were originally and let's assume some of them are set to standard, some are set lower, whatever. If you then just encapsulate that entire edit and then export it out using, let's say, the maximum setting, then what will happen, you will not increase the output whatsoever uh, by comparison to the sum of all the original parts. And why that's very interesting for me personally is because if I choose to use, say, maximum at any point or any other one, then what will happen is I know for a matter of fact that for anything that is cut only, when I then export out, I will always maintain the exact quality of the original ingest or the original transcode, which is mega important for workflows like, well, for my particular workflows it's very important and i would imagine it's also very important for anybody else whose primary objective is to maintain as much picture quality as possible now one last test here as well and that's just to show that if we want to we can actually degrade the picture quality or set it to lower settings and save on file size so once again same section of the timeline now i'm going to go to print to file again hq and this time I'm going to choose offline. Okay, so I'm simply just going to call that offline and then export it. Then again, we'll go back to, in fact, actually, before we go back and have a look at that, I'll go into here and as we can clearly see, that's all wrecked. Okay, I mean, that's an extreme example, but that's only to show us exactly the point they're improving. And of course, we've already seen it's wrecked. So what we'll do here, that's saying 33 megabytes and obviously the originals are much higher than that. So 186 compared to 32. Obviously we've seen it and we can see the file sizes and we know that we are able to reduce the picture quality and therefore reduce file size. Now the reason why you may want to do that, and I'm not suggesting for a moment you, you export and use that setting that I've just done, that was only used to demonstrate the point. But say for instance, you've captured a number of files over a period of time and let's just say that you happen to have say different settings when you did the ingests or the transcodes and then at the end of it you kind of like work out a little bit and go hold on well to be honest i don't necessarily need such high settings for the actual final product then you can bring it down lower and hopefully still maintain a visually lossless output and also on top of that which i find very interesting and i i use this method quite a lot if i have to start doing ingesting or transcoding to hqhqx and that is to set it to maximum for absolutely 
everything. Now, at that point, the argument could be said that, well, look, if you're doing, say, for instance, a locked off, say, torque and edge shot, you won't need anywhere near as much bit rate or as, as much kind of quality as you would do on an ingest or capture as what you would do if you were, say, recording something with a whip pan in or, you know, loads of, like, movement in the frame. But for me personally, I would just rather use HQ or HQX maxed out capture all the stuff safe in the knowledge of knowing that every single thing that I've captured is absolutely the best possible quality it ever could be. And then once I've completed the edit, what I will then do is kind of like go through sections of the timeline, say some of the, the, the less harder things to encode and then compare that to say the harder stuff to encode and work out a mean average across them for a single set and that would encapsulate all of their qualities and maintain a visually lossless output. But that's just one way of working with it, which I find to like really be useful for what I do anyway. Okay, so as far as this section of the video is concerned, I think this bit is now finished. Okay, so hopefully what we've seen there is going to be of interest to Eddie's users who may not have known that the codec is capable of doing that. And if anybody's come across this video as well, because maybe they've been searching for production codecs and such and all the rest of it, there's going to be links in the descriptions below to take you to Grass Valley so you can have a look at Eddie's. And also I'll do links to the forum as well so you can find out a little bit more about what Eddie's is all about. Anyways, without further ado, I need to get off because I've been at this all day and I've also been testing two capture cards and I'm going right off my head here because I'm just going square eyed after looking at monitors all day so I'm going to get out for a pint before the pub closes so the last thing that remains for me to say right now is thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now